Hello, Pa. Hello, Pa. Hello, Pa. Hello, Pa. Hello, Pa. Tambo Cluster is one of our air clusters in Zambia. I can't even express myself how I feel whenever I'm in Tambo Cluster because when I reach there, everybody has something to tell you about the start circle, about the children classes, about the standard devotional meetings. The Tambo Cluster is a remote area. There is no running water there. There is no electricity. Communication is a problem. Sometimes one Baha'i can dedicate himself, he can cycle a bicycle all the way from Mutambo just to reach the main road which is about 85 kilometers so that he puts that letter. They are managing their own activities without help from the regional council or from the National Spiritual Assembly. They have even reached the status of sending home front pioneers to other regions of Zambia. Chief Ntambo himself has been active. My faith really has helped me to be a chief. As a chief, I've got absolute uh, powers, but I've told people, no, any decision that has be, to be made must be consulted upon with elders. It has taught me to respect the position of our women in the society, to appreciate the education of our children, especially girls in particular. I try to bring in women to become uh, heads of certain uh, communities. Traditionally, women are trodden upon, they are not supposed to be leaders in any community. So I taught them, look, you cannot leave them behind. If you want to advance, let everybody move forward. I am happy to report that this position has been accepted by our community. The Baha'is of Ntambo has been empowered because they have understood the purpose of the institute process. The institute program in Zambia has decided to use the curriculum, which is the Ruhi materials, from Colombia. The Ruhi books are very helpful in the communities. I myself have done uh, books one to four and uh, I've drawn a lot of inspiration out of this. Inspiration to go to rise and serve. This really have helped us. The institute process has an impact on the status of women in the Ntambo cluster. During the previous years, women were shy to get involved in the Baha'i activities. But as we started conducting the institute courses in the Ntambo cluster, more women got interested 
and they went through the sequence of courses like up to book six. Mu book six, into na wanu mutu na mwingi ni yiri yiri tejo na tangi shira mwekesh kuna kana kana kutangi shira i. Chengi na wanu kuiruka chengi mwekesh kana kutangi shira. Diti na mwe kuiri jina dish halivu ya kuirandi he uri chukup. Kuitra mwenye kandi ari book. The impact that the institute has brought about, uh, there's a lot of confidence in people. People have come to, to know more, have been deepened in the first. And also people have come to, to realize the obligation towards the first. It's not just a matter of being uh, Baha'i and sit down, you know. It means a lot. It means going out and spreading the word of God. <laughs> The importance of having the cluster meetings has helped us much because everybody in the community knows what is happening. And community communities Tuna ili hambidi mwenjira ya ma-reflections. Muna ma-reflections, di mtu wa mwena nga, ne tuna kuya hambidi, tani ni tuna kufunta mwishina. Mchakachi muu, nwa shikuli pompelu, itanu na iye di. Kufuma yi pompelu yi wana, nwa shikuli pompelu, ikumi na chipompelu chimu. Ne reflection kuhosi, tuadu kuira for up one, tuadu kuya hambidi wani. My prime is my goal. Here had the community, we don't have enough to. Had the new one, we don't have enough to do community. Chinga, chinga, we plan. It will win. We're going to change now. It will win. It will do more. We're not going to do wrong. He could do and try to form a hand. Hand a hand. But in a kunzara, we took a shawan. It will win. It will move. We're going to do. We took a plan. Had the unity. Here, we're going to do quite a hand. 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 The secret of the success in the Ntambu cluster is because people have taken ownership of the institute as their own. excited about going to this feast. So much has been happening. It's going to be really exciting. If you see that there's no study circle, for example, or no devotional meeting in your sector, we want to see who would volunteer at this feast right now to start one. And then the idea is that everyone would lend assistance and see what that person needs or those people need to get that off the ground. Over the last couple of years, our community has learned a lot about individual initiative. They have the ability to say, okay, well, we need another study circle. I need to start another study circle. The number of devotional meetings, the number of study circles, and the number of children's classes has multiplied like crazy. People here, I noticed, are not afraid to take the initiative to start something new and to try something new and to make the mistakes and learn from them. They're very, they're very excited to just do it. A friend of mine was really searching 
And as soon as she told me this, I said, okay, guess what? My husband and I are starting a study circle next week. Little to my husband's <laughs> knowledge, I hadn't told him. And we want you to join. And she got so excited and I told her, the only thing is we need about nine or 10 people to start the class. So do you have any friends of yours that might be able to join the study circle? And she said, yeah, yeah. So that was the beginning of our study circle. And having to manage all these people, who were so full of energy, they just wanted to do so much. The assembly almost became like the traffic cop, you know, like having to direct where everyone goes and really to manage all this volcano of activity. We wanted to start a devotional meeting here at the university. I went and mentioned it to my LSA saying, oh, you know, this is what I'd like to do. What do you think? I was a little hesitant though, just because I hadn't done it before, but they totally encouraged it. They just said, you know, like, go ahead, experiment with it. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. Just try different things until you find something that works, which is exactly what I needed to hear. The institutions are very open if, if someone arises to do something or someone makes a suggestion. They allow us to have that latitude, you know, to think and to be creative and, and find different ways of, of really doing our roles or, you know, really encouraging us to, to do our best. And I think the most important thing that we're getting from all of the different institutions is encouragement. And they don't just forget that something has been done. They, they always ask, you know, well, how is it going? Is there anything we can do to help? It's not just something that they want you to start and take care of yourself. They're willing to help you as much as they can. I think what we learned is that the essence of encouragement is not telling someone, oh, good job, or, oh, I, I think you can do this, you know, or I'm sure you can do this. But rather, we've seen is that assembly members, with their presence, encourage people in their devotional meetings. Well, just go and, and be a part of their devotional meeting. Same with auxiliary board members or their assistants. It's a different type of encouragement where you actually walk together with the people. You don't just tell them, oh, good job. Just knowing that there are people behind you supporting you at all times, it's really encouraging. I think the success within this cluster is the level of unity uh, among the institutions. One of the very first steps to uh, establishing firm unity within the institutions is study of guidance. To put whatever the House of Justice has been saying before anything else. We have uh, in this cluster uh, interinstitutional meetings and uh, the assemblies are part of it, the auxiliary board members, the area coordinator, the institute board and uh, representative of the Baha'i Council. In these uh, meetings, a unified vision is uh, basically achieved. Auxiliary board members would never go off and make plans without consulting the assembly. And at the same time, the assembly wouldn't think of designing a plan without it consulting the auxiliary board members. So when we achieve the goal, the bottom line is uh, that we don't know who has done it, which institution has done it. When you love the institutions, and you love the, the friends in those institutions, it, it offers and provides a whole new dimension, you know, a whole new dimension. Mantova è nel nord Italia, è una piccola città, è una città con eh, tradizioni antiche. All'inizio del processo dell'istituto nell'area del Mantovano, alcuni amici pensavano e desideravano invitare non Baha'i ai circoli di studio. In i documenti del Centro Internazionale di Insegnamento era scritto che in alcune comunità nel mondo Baha'i i circoli di studio iniziavano a trasformarsi in strumenti per l'insegnamento diretto. Così anche noi abbiamo cominciato a pensare in questi termini e abbiamo deciso di provare all'inizio con gli amici e i conoscenti. In questo circolo di studio 
Eh, prima di tutto ho trovato una grande accoglienza. Come stai? Bene, grazie. Ah. Ho visto tante persone eh, diverse, però tutte eh, con tanta voglia di migliorarsi. Questa è la cosa che mi è piaciuta molto. Io non ho una mia fede. Io vado al circolo di studio perché eh, è una situazione eh, di nutrimento. Sto più attenta a come mi pongo con gli altri. Effettivamente da un po' di tempo vedo che funziona meglio, sia a casa che a scuola, eh, che con le amiche. Ci vado perché so che quando ritorno a casa, dopo essere stata al gruppo, sono più serena. Quando l'idea di invitare i non Bahai si è presentata alla comunità, le reazioni sono state diverse. La maggioranza dei credenti pensavano ed erano convinti che sia il metodo e sia il concetto dell'istituto fosse solo per i Bahai. Allora, noi innanzitutto nel nostro gruppo di lavoro ci sono cinque non Bahai e siamo in tre Bahai. Non sapevamo bene come presentare la cosa, quali sarebbero state le reazioni appunto di, di questi ragazzi, ma le reazioni, le reazioni sono state veramente positivissime, con tantissime domande, con tantissimi interessi. Sì, sono, mi sono sentita proprio accolta, abbracciata da, in, in qualche modo da, da loro e da questa fede. Fanno parte persone, ne fanno parte di questo circolo persone che sono molto importanti per me e per la mia vita. La fede Bai, come ho già detto prima, la sento in parte mia, anche pur non essendo una ragazza Bai. Però sì, può darsi, può darsi che in futuro diventi proprio mia. Abbiamo notato che eh, le poche esperienze che abbiamo avuto fino ad ora con gli amici no Bai, che la, il calore, la vicinanza, la continuità dell'esperienza eh, è molto gradita. È, è un'esperienza continuativa, non è un'esperienza eh, singola di qualche sera. Ogni sabato ci incontriamo alla stazione dove insomma, ci ritroviamo per andare a casa degli ospiti che ci tengono appunto. E poi alla sera si facevano comunque cose diverse per divertirsi, insomma, come andare al cinema, o giocare a bowling, queste cose lì. La Fede Bai eh, la conoscevo molto poco prima, anzi non la conoscevo proprio prima di incontrare Shidan. Sono contentissimo perché avere un amico che, di scuola che viene a una cosa così importante per me è una cosa molto bella. La Fede Bai ovviamente non può essere una cosa che riguarda solo Shidan, ma con il partecipare è diventata una cosa sempre più mia, che faceva parte di me. Il, il circolo di studi ha arricchito e ha approfondito ancora di più l'amicizia che c'era tra noi. Stiamo sperimentando vie creative di eh, raggiungere un numero maggiore di persone e per questo abbiamo fatto un esperimento attraverso il coro Bahai di Mantova. dei vari modi per invitare le persone ai circoli di studio è il coro. Invece di essere un concerto è una conferenza concerto. Con l'obiettivo attraverso un oratore Bahai di invitare esplicitamente i non Bahai, i simpatizzanti ai circoli di studio. Insieme all'attività del coro è molto importante la presenza di un workshop di danza a Manta. La domenica scorsa c'è stato un mega spettacolo, eh, uno spettacolo di danza a un gruppo workshop e alla fine della serata abbiamo invitato le persone al circolo di studio e incrociamo le dita e insomma speriamo che vada tutto bene. Quello che ci muove ad invitare i non Bahai a partecipare ai circoli di studio è l'amore, l'amore verso di loro e l'amore per Baha'u'llah.
In the beginning, we had one centralized devotional meeting. And with decentralization, we started having a devotional meeting here, a devotional meeting here, a devotional meeting there. And soon, we had a hundred devotional meetings with about a thousand friends gathering together. When the call came to multiply the devotional meetings, the reflection that took place was, how can we multiply? The realization came that they can have individual devotional meetings in their homes. Everybody is thirsting to have a prayer in their home. So each home literally became a, a, a center of devotional activity. Every time we have devotional meetings here, I feel so good because it's like this home is blessed. Because a lot of people, they, they have a home, but they don't do anything with it. They just live in it. Each one then is able to invite his friends and, and therefore it, it, it actually has a far wider uh, effect in the sense more people come and are in touch with the Baha'i community. What we immediately saw happening was the large number of non-Baha'i friends who suddenly started coming. I've been coming to these devotional meetings quite regularly and it really calms me down and I feel really good fellowship kind of with all these people and it's a good feeling that I felt I'm building a relationship with God as well. I feel very welcome in the Baha'i community. My kids love to pray now. The Baha'i prayers are very nice. They have prayers for different occasions. For everything they have a prayer. So that's the best part I like. They knew that this was a meeting where Baha'is are going to gather to pray. And they were curious. They wanted to know, okay, how is it you Baha'is pray? Mm. You know? And when our friends or when their friends come in, we can actually pass on the knowledge and the skills to them, you see? Because yeah. we can get them and say, why don't you organize the devotion meetings although you're not Baha'i? Yeah. And in fact, that is exactly what happened. Mm. Before I became a Baha'i, I attended um, quite a number of devotionals and I've also held a few devotionals before I declared. I told my neighbours that prayers can be said in anywhere. So if even you want to have it in your homes, it will be wonderful. There are blessings from God, you know. This Lily particularly, she said, yes, why not? It will be nice to have prayers in my place. So she. Uh, welcome us to have a devotional gathering in her house. Uh, Friday One thing that we have found uh, has been very successful is themed devotional meetings. For example, one was for friends who are sitting for the major government exams. I organized this devotional for two purposes. Uh, one is to show my friends how the Baha'is pray. And the other reason is because the exams are coming up real soon. I think my non-Baha'i friends felt very happy because they, you could see the smile on their face and I think they're very confident to sit for their exams now. So today we have literally about more than 100 devotional meetings going on when it previously, by, because of our own uh, um, restrictions, or our own uh, thinking, we had confined it to one devotional meeting. One thing that we've learned is how participation in one core activity usually leads into participation in one of the others or both of the others, right? So when I invited Lily to attend study circle, she agreed to it. So we started study circle. Well learned I got three non Baha'i Chinese ladies who agreed to come every Friday. They felt very comfortable with me and my family. I've got uh, four children. The youngest one is Roya and they had children the same age. That way, I make Roya to go about and inviting them as well to attend junior youth classes and the children's classes. So it's all interconnected. These three core activities are going to be portals for the entry by troop, for the process of entry by troops, and therefore multiplying it. And, and every home uh, having a devotional meeting 
and every home trying to have children's classes, every home trying to start a study circle with their friends. It is their service to Baha'u'llah. an amazing difference in the community. The community was alive and buzzing. We saw an immediate change in the feasts. All of a sudden the feasts became more alive, people had more suggestions for the assemblies, there was much more happiness. We've got plays in our cluster meetings now, we've got a lot of music going on and it's really brought the community together and we're having a lot more fun than we used to I guess. The summer campaign ran through the whole of summer, so three months. We started usually very early in the morning, around 8.30, which is quite early for me. <laughs> and we'd go to about 5.30 in the afternoon. We were able to spend the summer together learning and reading the writings and studying together, which was very memorable and unique. One of the reasons that we needed a summer campaign was to quickly move a significant number of believers through the full sequence of the Ruhi series of materials. All the courses were filled up. In many cases, instead of having uh, 12 or 15 enrolled for one course, there were 20 or 30 who were overwhelmed. We couldn't have imagined the response of the, of the believers. There were even some believers who came on the first day and said, I'm here in case someone drops out at the last minute, I want to take their place. It was like a university and everyone from around the city would come together and they'd have their different rooms and they'd, they'd be studying something different and, and then we'd share with other people during the breaks, oh, what are you studying? Oh, I'm studying this, oh. It was just, it was absolutely fantastic. During the summer campaign, we perhaps introduced arts seriously for the first time. And it was interesting to see how the use of arts assisted the participants to really understand what they were reading and to talk about it. It's very pleasing to see the way the arts are being taken out into the community by the participants of the study circle. I'd like to introduce our, our study circle. We couldn't have imagined the impact of the arts. We're seeing people actually composing music, people writing poetry. We're seeing puppet shows that are explaining some of the teachings of the faith uh, and also with regards to storytelling of events in the history of the faith. And this is something that we couldn't have imagined, the impact of the arts. One of the most significant uh, aspects of the study circle process was a real change in the way we studied and learnt together. Most of us are, of course, very familiar with the lecture process where a person with great knowledge stands up and delivers a, a talk or a lecture. Now, the study circle process is almost the opposite of that. It's a, a matter of learning as a group. It's a matter of participative uh, learning where people do things together, they learn together, they ask questions together. The tutor is primarily the, responsible for the process and not necessarily responsible to provide all of the knowledge and all of the information that's required to run the study circle. If I look at the list of tutors that we have in Western Australia at the moment, maybe only one-tenth of them would have been believers that I would have thought, oh, they would make a good tutor. The other 90% are believers who have been arisen through this process and they're some of our best tutors. I was really scared about getting involved in the institute process and tutoring. I thought, no, I can never tutor because I was just so shy. A little while through book one, I thought, oh, I can do this. I think because my tutor was someone who I knew was being very shy and he was doing it. So I thought, no, I can do this. One of the very important parts of the Institute Board's role is to ensure that the tutors are continually developing in their role. So one of the important ways of doing this is the tutor encounters. Tutor encounters are basically some time set aside every couple of months where the tutors will come together um, just to discuss different issues. We'll talk about challenges and victories we've had in study circles. So 
if you've been having a problem you can voice it to the group and get their feedback. And this is a way by which the tutors themselves can share information but by which the Institute Board can also gauge how effective the Institute process is and how it's developing. We also have an Institute newsletter called The Wayfarer. The Wayfarer magazine is our tutor magazine. Basically tutors can send in stories or suggestions or victories, little snippets of their study circle experiences for other tutors to have a look at. It's beautifully put together and just emailed out to the tutors so it's very accessible. It contains um, actual tips that will enable the tutor to become a better tutor. You've always got something there every month updating you on what's new in the world of institutes. The believers have understood the power of the institute process in terms of transforming the lives of individuals and preparing us for entry by troops. En realidad yo me siento muy feliz de estar aquí en, un, en la inauguración del instituto porque en realidad este ha sido un proceso que, de, de un trabajo de, de todos los bajáis. La construcción del edificio realmente es la culminación del esfuerzo de muchas personas y manifiesta el grado y el trabajo que lleva, lleva mucha gente. Usted no sabe, el instituto como instituto no es un lugar. Es un concepto allá muy más amplio que tiene que ver con la vida espiritual de las personas. ¿no? El Instituto Rugí básicamente está dedicado en Colombia a la educación espiritual. El Rugí, el mismo nombre Rugí significa espiritual, ¿no? entonces por eso dice el Instituto Rugí y realmente el enfoque ha sido eh, ayudar a desarrollar esas capacidades latentes que están en el ser humano. ¿no? Y, y que va enfocado en una de las líneas del plan de cinco años, ¿no? que tiene que ver con los recursos humanos. Hemos aprendido durante todos estos años cuáles son esos pasos. ¿no? Bueno, primero se inició una educación fuerte y sistemática con las clases de niños. Las clases de niños bajáis eh, realmente influencian mucho la vida, yo creo que, de cualquier individuo, ¿no? Porque es donde están poniendo como que las bases espirituales de lo que va a ser esa persona. Hoy aprendimos una oración en la clase de niños. Es de hecho un hombre que hoy se dedica al servicio de toda la raza humana. A mí me gusta ir a la clase de niños porque nos enseñan más y siempre jugamos y nos, y nos divertimos. Los niños a las clases de niños y los jóvenes que ya, que ya han pasado de clase de niños que pasan al libro de, del poder de la palabra. El libro El poder de la palabra está dirigido específicamente a los grupos prejuveniles. Este es un libro muy... y está poniendo en contacto a ellos con la palabra sagrada, que es lo más importante también. Lo que más me gusta de mi grupo de jóvenes son las lecturas y sobre lo que habla sobre Bajaula y sobre Adur Bajar. A mí me gusta mi, mi grupo prejuvenil porque si yo no tengo un lápiz y una tiene dos, ella me presta uno. Los cambios que han habido en el grupo prejuvenil pues son muchos. Las ganas que ellos tienen cuando, por ejemplo, me ayudan a mí en una clase de niños, pues los adelantos a veces me dejan boquiabierta que yo misma ni creo lo que estoy viendo. Cuando yo termine de mi grupo prejuvenil, yo pienso de coger unas clases de niños para enseñar la fe bajay. Luego que, que uno va a la adolescencia, comienza con otros programas que son círculos de estudio más avanzados, comienza a conocer más de la fe bajay. En mi círculo de estudio estoy aprendiendo muchas cosas buenas, por ejemplo, como cómo debemos comportarnos con las demás personas. 
Luego uno pasa al año de servicio donde tiene la oportunidad yo creo que de, de poner también en práctica muchas de las cosas que ha aprendido. Y uno siempre dice un año de servicio, pero realmente es un año de, de servicio para uno, ¿no? no tanto para los otros. El año de servicio ha cambiado un poco mi vida en cuanto a la actitud, ha mejorado mi comportamiento, mi carácter. Decidí dar mi año de servicio aproximadamente cuando era prejoven, que veía que otros jóvenes nos iban y nos daban más clases, entonces yo pensé que podría ser lo mismo y, a, y aquí estoy sirviendo. Bueno, sí me gustaría de hacer un año de servicio para ayudar a, a los niños, a la, para que los niños siempre estén unidos. Después de mi año de servicio pienso entrar en el programa de licenciatura universitaria que, dan, que brinda el instituto. El programa de estudios superiores del Instituto Ruji es reconocido por el Ministerio de Educación y el programa de estudios superiores es la culminación de, de todo este proceso donde de verdad se está tratando de formar un nuevo profesional que entienda conceptos sobre servicio a la comunidad y sobre valores morales dentro de su campo. El concepto de educación que se maneja allí es totalmente diferente al concepto que se maneja en las universidades tradicionales. Entonces el hecho de ser una educación eh, integral que no mira únicamente la parte material del ser humano sino que abarca eh, muchos conceptos espirituales le ayuda a uno a entender muchos de los procesos que operan en el mundo. De que la licenciatura me va a ser de gran aprovecho porque así ayudo en mi comunidad. Pues el proceso del instituto es de verdad un proceso de educación alternativa desde los primeros años hasta el nivel universitario se está formando un, un programa secuencial para preparar nuevos seres humanos que contribuyan a sus comunidades y contribuyan a la sociedad en general. Lo que en cada uno de estos programas entonces lo que hace es que te va conectando con la acción y con la misma necesidad de la comunidad, ¿no? Entonces cuando uno piensa en el potencial y cuando uno ve un proceso sólido de educación de la comunidad, entonces uno piensa si se le apoya y se sigue conscientemente y sistemáticamente ese proceso, tiene que dar sus frutos. Porque bueno, yo presión protección que talín proyecto de estudiar que pasé, yo clase de materia ne proyecto sil carácter malo voy a hacer. La sátira de mi primera comanda body unity que cura algo sa, la body cooperativo que trabaja con manera de dos algo sa. Estudio circle que ruhi wan de que ruhi sat samo que charo ma, hamra arse tetis ana sátira le patak patak que le va a hacer que hacen. La devotional meeting hoy le sátra tham vago sa, la arco que la bal que हमें संग सत्र ठाउं में बागों सा और तेज में पांच से आठ ही सेना बाल बच्चा रूले तो कच्चे बाटा तेरे फायदे ली रहे कसम तेरे खुशी सेन बच्चा रूले यो रोही प्रोसेस लेकर दाने ही इस तो परिवर्तन आये हैं समाज में। सब इलान नमस्ते। यो रोही रोही लेकर दा धेरी मानिस हरू बाल कक्षा रू संचालन करियो प्रार्थना सभा हरू ठाउं ठाउं होना थालियो बाहा हरू पनी विभिन्न बाहा एक्टिविटीज़ हरू करना थालियो मैं इसको कीचाई बाहा युथर ले दिन सो बाहा बाहा य हमें तो वो करना ही जाके हैं नहीं जो नहीं मजा चाहिए तो हम कोड़िया पार्टी चु खाली बनिया बने रखे चाहे है वो हज़े चाहे एकदम कोर नहीं है वाले जो कहीं के कहीं नहीं हाँ वो आओ हमरा किन्हें लाख चाहे हमारे जो छोरी कलास ले लगी ताओ हमें बुझ नहीं एकदम आओ पढ़े जिसने फिर वो ते करान हमार रुई थ्री लेस लेस के बच्चे हमरो मन में जब स्कूल खोलने 
चाहना आयो हम स्कूल खोलने निर्णय करो राम स्कूल पनी बनाए यो स्कूल खोले रा हमी बच्चा हरुलाई राम रो शिक्षा दिना सक्षो आध्यात्मिक शिक्षा दिना सक्षो तो हमी युवा शक्ति ले जे पनी करना सक्षो भने हमरा एक टबेटा अच्छी वे ओकरा बोर्डिंग स्कूल हम पढ़ा चुके वे एकदम बनिया परिगर परिवर्तन हेला बनिया कोटेशन सो याद कर ला चुके एकदम बनिया बुद्धि हेला चुके कार्बन � धेरै परिवर्तन देखिए उन्हें रुपानी स्कूल पढ़ती धेरै आकर्षित भाई उन्हें बाहर रुप स्कूल पढ़ती मात्रे हैं ना बाहर रुपानी पढ़ती पानी आकर्षित भाई हमें और रुपानी बता रही है स्कूल में पढ़ाने सकते हो गैरजन सारों ले अपने बच्चा हरु पढ़ाने तैयार सम शुरू में अब यो तालिम प्रतिष्ठान � तेज पश्चात सही अब यो बाहे इंस्टिट्यूट ले टीआई इंस्टिट्यूट ले सही ये वड़ा साथ चले बाहे समुदाय में सही सक्षात तक अक्षर का आवश्यकता रही था बन्ने महसूस करियो यो क्लास यो सक्षात तक अक्षर शुरू करे को डेढ़ महीना पौने दो ही महीना जाती भाई हो और जस में सही आइले दस दस वटा कक्षारु सं बयाने में जन्ना सहभागी हरुसन रा तेज मचाएं आठ दिनों तक बाहर हरुसन ये इसमें कोटेशन हरुसन उधरन हरुसन ईश्वर का बाय निरुसन रा महिला रूले बड़ी बंदा बड़ी मात्रा में जाएं उधरन रोमन पराया कुसन कुन कसी कोटेशन भी जाननी परतना भी जाननी हमरा एकदम परिगर बर्तन हेलो बगलाक्षी हमरा एकदम बनिया सूत्रों बंदा आवारी मौ यो कराब कोटेशन प्रार्थना कर रहे सोचो तब बयान उठने वाला मैं बनी मौ प्रार्थना कर सो तो किताब संग सदे मौ मेरे पास में उनसा बन रहा महिला रूप के महिला रूप ले पाने का सो महिला हरों से ही सान सानो व्यापार में अलग रहे सान रोटी नहीं रहे मेहनत कर रहे कुछ सान और अगर हार्ड बाजार करें उन्हें हमें लेकर ती अमदानी करें उन रक्ति खर्च करें उन भन्ने कुरा हरों हमें चाहे रहने सकते ना दिमाग में कती रहने कि कसले कती पै कसले कती पैसा को सामान दे कुछ कि के सामान दे कुछ दिमाग में अपने लेख पढ़ करना सक्षम, हिसाब हरू करना सक्षम। सहयोग करके समय लिखे हैं हिसाब बारी कुछ नहीं जाने हैं। आओ हमारा दुकान में वो फैक्ट्रियाँ सो महीना बारी खींची, चामाल कून कहाँ खींची, वो साक्तार करे तेल सेल कून कून खींची। तामे वो करना है नहीं लिखे जाने में, वो एक आठ टकाले की जने पैंतालीस ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट ने यह पानी महसूस करें कि आध्यात्मिक को साथ साथ ही भावतिक कुरान को पानी आवश्यक रहें सब बने महसूस भायो जो साक्षरता पास चाहते हैं बैंकिंग प्रायोजन करियो तो इसलिए जो हमें ले कौशली लिया मंद के समुदाय को विकास को लागे कहीं न कहीं हमें ले गानों पर सों तो हमें ले ये समझें अब धेरे पैसा रूप फाजुल में खर्च करते हों अब तो बानी ला सुधारने को लागे रहे वड़ा आध्यात्मिक मार्ग में हिरनों को लागे सब ऐले के पैसा जोगाए रचे जमा करने जमर को करें किताबर से सिखल के बारे में किताबर में उठा के बिंग के बारे में किन किन करे पढ़ते कहीं के बिंग के रंस उठा किताबर में सोचने चाहिए अपने हमें बिंग के तो सच्ची उच्च की हमने गांव आची सोखे हम गांव आची उकर चीन कहे एक जो फर्स्ट में जो अन्य छाकी रखे जो कुछ कमाएंगे कर चीन जो तो बात सुकून कल की जो कुंग चीत भात जिन्हें अपन चीन तो थारू ना भतवा था से दम कैसे भात पुस्ती की तो कुंग कल की जो वो सौ दिन आग भात रानी का छह महिला ना ने महिला ना जो भात एक मुट्ठी सौ के सौ दिन रख यान बैंक के बारे में सुनने पे ना हम रशिया के इटा पढ़ाई है ले कि हम रशिया के सौ का जमा है विकाय भला है विकाय के तो इटा सौ का सोच आबट करल की हम रशिया के बैंक सोच निश्चयम की जो कोनो फिर बपार कर भी जान तो हम रशिया बैंक में आक्षिण तो हम रशिया उत्तेज से कोस बाटो से हम रशिया के बैंक से बाहर करी कोना पैसा तो सा खा खाचा पड़ती था और थे से उठाया क्या वो कुछ काम चला भी रा पच्चीस तीस बार के पैसा रो लिंचन रा आपने ये वड़ा प्रोडक्टिव काम में जो खर्च कर रहा आपने जीवन या पन लाये चाहिए उन्नति तेरा अगाड़ी बढ़ाओ ने जमल को करेगा सर यो क्लस्टर को विकास में मुख्य रूप में भाग मुख्य महत्वपूर्ण तत्व जो ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट हो 
जो रोही प्रशिक्षण का प्रक्रिया में जो हमें आध्यात्मिक शिक्षा पाँच ते पच्चीस समुदाय को वििकस को उन्नति को विवास को लगी सेवामूलक कार्यक्रम करने सोच नन बाहाई बाह्य गतिविधि में बाह्य कार्यक्रम में आने को लगी एकदम सहयोग भविष्य में हज को संख्या में वृद्धि को लगी एकदम ठूल ढोका खोलने संपूर्ण भाग में इसलिए ठूल काम कर Where mention of God has been made and His praise glorified. 